Earl Anthony did it first, then Pete Weber, and now today, Jason Belmonte tries to become the third player to win 10 major championships. But here's the thing, there are four others standing right next to him who want to knock him off. Will they be able to do it? We're going to find out. He looks good. Columbus, Ohio for the PBA Barbersaw Players Championship. Here are your five finalists. The number five seed owns two career PBA Tour titles, including one major from Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. The number four seed is a two-time member of Team Canada from Quebec, Canada, Patrick Drew. Welcome inside Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl for this Players' Championship, another big February major with Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont, and thank you for joining us. Randy, a week ago, we saw Marshall Kent in Indianapolis make the final and then lose, and he just didn't have a good game. He is back in the final today. What does it say about him? It's a different guy. I mean, it's a much more mature Marshall Kent than we've seen over the years. This is the first time in his career he's making back-to-back -back telecasts. He's got a lot more confidence now, too. You put all that together with that skill set, uh, there's no surprise he's our number number two seed today. Bit of the low lights him last week for Marshall, but believe me, you didn't see many of those shots when he qualified in the number two position. But at the top of the ladder and poised to make bowling history, have another shot at it this month is Belmo. What else can you say about this guy? I mean, it's just major championship domination by Jason Belmonte. He led this event from start to finish almost led by 300 pins, and now finds himself in the most enviable position of needing only one win to make bowling history. Major championship number 10. He would join Earl Anthony and Pete Weber atop that list. He had one chance already this year at the TSC and finished fourth. Can he get to number 10 today? He might know the answer to that. Let's see if Kimberly Pressler will ask him. Thanks, Dave. So, Jason, you find yourself under the bright lights in a major telecast once again, twice in three weeks. So how does it feel for a chance at trying to make history again? Yeah, well, in order to do that, you've got to be in this arena to do it. So I'm really happy with the way that I've played all week, uh, bowled phenomenally. Now I just have to find uh, that form for one more game lift that trophy up and you know join two of the greatest bowlers of all time if not the two greatest bowlers of all time um, with a, a really remarkable piece of history any added pressure because you are the defending champion no i don't feel the pressure because of the defending champion i actually feel you know nervous because i i always feel nervous out here um, this environment is so special that when you get out here your legs start to get a little uh, jellier and your arms get a little weaker so um, it's no different to any other week, and I'm just really excited to get out here and play. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. Kimberly and Jason, thank you very much. Of course, he's going to have to wait a little while because we do have Gerard and Smallwood coming up. Then Chris Prather makes his ESPN debut at match number two. Marshall Kent is back, as Randy mentioned, and of course, Belmo going for another major championship. So, Tom Smallwood, the number five seed, and he Barely made it. He made a big rush at the end in the position round to come to the number five seed. Two-time champion. Last win was 2013. And he'll get a messenger. Yes, sir. That small one cooler than the bottom of the polar bear's feet. We saw that position round. And this
this opening shot, head put into the sidewall, and just slams into the tent. And now from Quebec, from Tokyo, Quebec, Patrick Girard. since 2005 when he made two appearances, finished tied for third in both at the PBA Dallas Open and the Cambridge Credit Classic in West Babylon, New York. Come on, Saddam. That had to hook. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Just a touch of sarcasm from Patrick. Now, it's just a bad shot here. He misses it off of his hand. Tried to save it late. Patrick knows it. Patrick, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Really enjoyed. Let's make it. Competing against him back in the early 2000s. Well, you heard him say, let's make it. to be our hammer tough spare replay. Well, just like you draw it up, throw the head pin over into the 10, the ball takes out the two and the four, and nice job there to stay clean by Patrick Gerard. Now, if you're Tom Smallwood, the unsinkable Tom Smallwood icon, you think, <laughs> you think okay, he, he might miss this. When you see a guy make a great shot in front of you, what does that mean to you? And nothing, not, not for this guy. I mean, he, nothing phases Tom Smallwood. That type of messenger got hung up. Bastard ball. Let's take a look at our pattern, Randy, named after another one of the all-time greats. Yeah, the Carmen Salvino, 44 feet in length, and really high scores this week. Jason Belmonte averaging over 244, sets a major championship record. But the scores today are going to be predicated on how the players break down the old pattern. Wait to see how they transition. And I am sure Carmen is watching, and we want to send our regards after we had a chance to spend a lot of time with him last week in Indianapolis and just uh, adored spending time with me and his beautiful Go wife. Ahead. So. Are they getting it or? Well. Let's see what Tom has done in this tournament so far. Well, we tell you about a special NBA Sunday matchup on ESPN. We got the Spurs and Cavaliers today at 3:30. NBA countdown at three, noon Pacific time. Our crew includes Chris Bosh. We're in the crew and studio tonight and today. Take a look at the riser pin on this bowling ball. It's over by some. There you go, right there. See that? That layout is because Tom Smallwood throws a full roller. Smallwood comes back after despair. Now Girard with a bit of a boost after making a very difficult spare in the second. All right, let's go, buddy. Oh, geez. Oh, boy. Oh, he hates it for good reason. So what's missing here, Randy? Well, it looks like he's real late. Slow and then he's trying to hammer on it at the bottom of the swing. He doesn't look real fluid right now. It's almost like he doesn't think his ball is going to curve, and he tries to help it at the bottom. Any chance he's got a little nerves oh, not being on the tube for a while? Without question. All right. If he makes a spare here, he only loses right. four pins and count, but he's got to figure out a way to pry it off his hand. Hook, hook, hook. There you go. Well, he's made two very difficult spares. Just a little bit of muscle in his swing, Dave. He needs to just free it up and let go of it. Went straight on the other one. Why not hook it? All right, buddy. His son's Ryan and Derek undoubtedly watching. Stephanie Bergeron. Fiance. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Called his own shot that time. And a 
solid strike to remain within Tom Smallwood's draft. All right, so check it out. This riser pin's over here because he actually tracks in between the fingers and thumb right here. And so if that pin's in a different position, the ball would track over the thumb hole. By putting that pin over there, it changes the direction of the flare, keeps it off of the thumb hole. Is that pretty unique? There's not a lot of guys out here that track that way. I think Craig Nidefer may be the only other one, unless he's changed it. Beautiful shot here by Tom Smallwood, doubling up. He's only that little soft 10 in the second frame. Going with the Katana Slash. Excellent crowd in Columbus, as always. This is what we call high flush. That ball just inside a third arrow already, and this is game one. We're watching the players warm up. They were playing the outside part of the lane prior to the telecast. So all of a sudden, Gerard is down 24. Stay there. Well, whatever adjustment he made, he made it successfully. Now, a little bit better timing and getting to the foul line a lot better now. Now he's able to direct the ball online. You know, Patrick made a pretty big change there. in his game when he first came out on tour. When he first came out on tour, he used to hook it a lot. He's actually cut down on his rev rate. Just take a look here at the last shot. And much, much better position at the foul line. Which is interesting because all you hear about these days is rev rate, rev rate, rev rate, and how much we're seeing from so many players. Oh, Pat. oh my goodness. Uh. Boy, there for a half a breath. You thought that might slide into the gutter. Makes two really good shots in a row, then comes back with another bad one here. Not only does it go right That's of target, but he shot. misses it off of his hand. This is not the environment you want to be in when things start to go south. Spare it. Well, he's made some very difficult and very unusual spares. Again, Scott Smallwood <laughs> gives him a solid five as we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Professional Bowlers Association. And the PBA has made a lot of friends over those years, including some very right, right, popular right. athletes outside the bowling. Hey, what's up? This is Chris Paul. Happy 60th anniversary to the PBA. He made it. He made it. He made it. Oh! The Barbasol PBA Players Championship is brought to you by Barbasol Premium Razors. You're looking good, America. By Go Bowling, promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Roto Grip, built for those who take bowling seriously. Don't just play the game, own it. And by Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. We go to our extra frame tournament highlights. We go to the final round of match play. Patrick Dombrowski tried to elbow his way in. He and Wes Malott, but they did not make the final five. The final game of match play saw that Jason Belmonte, Marshall Kent, and Chris Prather had all done enough to lock up the first three spots. Marshall Kent, however, would shoot 250. Position round game to move around Chris to grab the second seed. So that leaves these guys fighting for the final two spots. Bill O'Neill has had a great month, but hasn't made a show. Patrick Girard from Canada hasn't made a show in 13 years. Girard would shoot 221 to move from sixth to fourth, but both Williams and Smallwood struggled until Smallwood got up in the 10th and doubled to grab the fifth and final spot. 
Bill O'Neill finished just 13 pins off the show, and Stu Williams only five back. And that's appropriate because here is our final five for this show. And we'll take a look at other finishers. We mentioned uh, the top 10. Uh, we see also Darren Tang, A.J. Chapman, who bowled well here a year ago in this house. Randy, Kyle yeah. Sherman to the 15th spot. Yeah, but that Bill O'Neill, that's three sixth-place finishes in a row. Billy's been bowling really, really great as of late. Just needs a couple of breaks to go his way. Hall of Famer Chris Barnes at 20th, and Liz Johnson making the top 24. So match number one is underway. Don't forget, the winner of this match will take on Chris Prather, then Marshall Kent, and then Jason Belmonte. And Belmo going for a 10th major championship. We tie him with Earl Anthony and Pete Weber. Oh. And Smallwood looks very comfortable right now. This guy uses very little oxygen. There's <laughs> just not a whole lot going on. A couple of steps taken to the foul line. Uh, puts a little moisture on his on the palm of his hand. Get a nice grip on the bowling ball. There he goes, right there on the wrist. Puts his hand in it, rolls it up. Uh, maybe half of the breath. And then all he does is attack the foul line. 15 appearances on television. Nine wins in those matches, 13 defeats. This one just a little bit, and the six kicks the ten out nicely. So Smallwood, 37 pin lead. So Girard making really a last stand right here. He has just had a hard time hitting the head pin. It's either I hit the head pin or it's like. Now talking with Mike Edwards sitting next to us doing the stats. He says his feet look fast, and I agree with Mike. Feet get fast. He gets out of sync and out of time. Try to make it. Loses every shot to the Why not? Well, he's made everything so far, and he hasn't had many easy ones. Go for power. My goodness. I can spare. I can spare all day. And that's true. And this is a great shot, Patrick. The problem is your opponent is right. doing nothing but striking. He hasn't, not he hasn't had anything even resembling a normal leave yet when he hasn't struck. Well, when he hasn't, yeah, when he hasn't, <laughs> when he hasn't hit the head pin, it's been six, six, seven, five. However, as you see, Gauntlet Fury in Girard's arsenal. Come on! Better. Much better, but might not be enough. <laughs> as he sarcastically thanks the bounce of bowling for the uh, little bonus there. Well, he's 42 down and, and running out of time. His back score, 228. Smallwood is already in the 230s. <laughs> That's great reaction there. Small would just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, you will advance. Made three appearances in 2017, a fourth and eighth in that Grand Casino Hotel and Resort. Oh. Open, open, open. And a fourth in the TFC last year. That uh, wasn't the best effort. No, but he doesn't need anything crazy here, Smallwood. You see Jason Belmonte, and he's going to have to sit it out a little, couple of more matches ahead of him here, but it looks like Tom Smallwood's about to move on. And face Chris Prather, who will be making his television debut. Smallwood easily manages that 10 pin. He won the Steve Davey Sportsmanship Award in 2016. And you'll see him in PBA League with the Philadelphia Hitmen. quietly goes about his business and uh, you know I think he's probably regarded as one of the toughest in the 10th frame when he needs it. Well, he proved it in the position round when he had the double and did in order to make the show and looks like he's moving on to the next match. Oh, 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 oh,
as he stays clean, he's more than fine. Right, but now he's going to try to figure out how to get that week 10 out, whether it's a ball change or something that he's going to do differently with his roller. The good news is he has the comfort of being able to experiment a little bit here. Here, though, Dave, Patrick Gerard can make Smallwood show up if he strikes out in the ninth and tenth frame. Again, max score 228. If he strikes out, it will force Tom Smallwood to mark. Got a shot. Nice, great shot from Gerard. Got a shot there. Boy, the really cliche feast for fame really applies today for the way Gerard has bowled. Yeah, it's either been a strike or it's been a, an absolute design. PBA's Extra Frame will feature more than 1,000 hours of live streaming coverage this year from the PBA, PBA 50, and PWBA tours. Upcoming events include the USBC Masters, the start of the PBA 50, and PWBA seasons. Get a yearly, monthly, or even a three-day subscription today. Click on the Extra Frame link in the menu section at pba.com. Oh, now that's going to spin in front and that's just stop. There. So that's that was kind of right. the in-between in shot. It's his first single pin he's left yeah. so far. All right. and this is where he gets it right, kind of misses it just enough where it doesn't come off the spot. He just really fought timing issues throughout this entire game, or at least for half the game. A little uh, speech to his... Quebecois. Didn't miss a spare. I didn't miss a spare. And you know what? He's going to end up in a clean game. <laughs> it's just going right, to be friend, one of the stranger clean thing. games you've seen on TV. This is uh, the grind about special. Six count washout in the second. Right, five count washout in the seventh. He leaves the rail in the third. Not five. <laughs> Better show. Oh, that is fine. There you go. Right, okay. All right. All right. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Thank you all. Good day. Good boy. Thank you. Tom Smallwood will advance against Chris Prater. And the Players' Championship, the Barbasol Players' Championship, and Ben Webb's Columbus Bowl. So that's the 10th career television victory for Tom Smallwood. His family should be here today. We're going to make the drive from Saginaw, Michigan, over to see Tom in action. <laughs> and he's giving him a good show. Oh, zero chance for one. But three light tens for Tom Smallwood to think about during the break. Yes, it was an easy win. But what adjustments will he make? Maybe a ball change to take on a young star in Chris Prather. The match number one of the Barbasol Players Championship goes to the veteran Tom Smallwood in search of his third title and his second major. Time for the Ebonite flashback, taking us back to 1997, the Bud Light Championship in Lake Grove, New York, where at age 39, our host, Wayne Webb, on the last of his 20 PBA Tour titles. Oh, my mullet. <laughs> and he beats another Hall of Famer, Amato Monticelli. Tell you what, Wayne Webb had a lot of power for a small guy. Uh oh, all right, in the face. Three, four, six, seven. So that left Amleto with a chance. Now he didn't give this guy many chances and get away with it. Look at Amleto hook it. But he had the mark in the tenth. Unbelievable. Yeah. Couldn't convert it, and there you go. Wayne Webb gets the novelty check. 20 titles, Player of the Year, Hall of Famer in '93, one of four players to be the PBA Tour and PBA 50 Tour Player of the Year. We're in his house in Columbus. And to find Wayne, turn out the lights, because that suit will brighten up everything in the house. One of the best players ever, Wayne Webb, right there. I'll tell you, he does all the work here, and that's his wife, Elaine. And by the way, Wayne will be the first to tell you that. Yeah. He addressed the crowd today and pretty much said the same thing. There she is. 
kind of a Jackson Pollock-like design on the jacket for Wayne Webb. And by the way, he'll be joining us in the booth. There's Chris Brather making his debut on worldwide television against the veteran Tom Smallwood in our second match of the Barbasol PBA Players Championship when we return. Take a look at downtown Columbus at Barbasol Players Championship. We're on Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. Let me take a look at our bracket. Next match, number three seed Chris Prather against Tom Smallwood, who defeated Patrick Girard, 237-206. Marshall Kent and Jason Belmonte standing by to take on the winners. And we have Chris Prather, Tom Smallwood, and Wayne Webb has joined us in our location, Lane Side. And uh, thank you, first off, for everything you do for us when we're here and for everybody in our crew. And uh, what a great house you have here. Oh, thank you. It's been such a great week. It's been so much fun. I like the fact that Mike Irwin just kind of lets you and your wife do do what you do best. Tom Smallwood through the face broke up trouble there. Oh, some courage. Well, you know, being on tour for so long, it was really easy to make sure the guys had a great, great stop right. and experience. A nice break here, tripping out the 6'10 for Smallwood to start. Remember, he finished with three week tens in the last game, even though he won. That's going to stay with you. Oh, look out here. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that coming. A surprising mistake for Tom. Completely missing a pin. And so now here is Chris Prather. And this is our first look at Chris. 26 years old. Out of Milton, Florida, in the Panhandle State. That's got to go. And that looks like one of Patrick Girard's shots of the first. First shot on TV. Wayne, what went through your mind when you were going up against a player making their first ever telecast? It made it real hard. I mean, you get the nerves going in, and especially in a condition like this where they're, you miss right and it's gone. So, and that's normally their mistake. You get it a little right. No, he, right so the easy one was missed. The harder one was made. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I always wanted to face a player that was making their first ever telecast. <laughs> I, I had a TV experience. They had none. Their nerves were going to be in play. I especially like taking them on after I had a game or two under my belt because I thought I had a huge advantage. Well, you guys thrived on television, Wayne. I know you did, Randy. You definitely did. Better. Oh, my God. Back trip. We'll take that. Well, that's a nice break there in frame number two. Trip two forward for Chris Prather. That's our Barbasol close shave of the day. Well, he said this is better, but this ball doesn't turn over down lane. That could have been 2 4 10, 2 8 10. Instead, it's a trip two. There were a lot of 2 8 10s this week. What, what, what do you think that was caused by? Just carry down? The Earl's a little bit longer, and there was a good shot, but you had to feed it to the right. And when you feed it to the right, you get a little hang out there, and you push it a little bit. It just goes. Solid floor there for Tom. That never happens. Randy, looks like he did not make a ball change, did he? Nope. Looks like he's still with the same one. And I think he probably tried to give it a little more wrist. Looked like the first frame he tried to give it a little bit more wrist, and he went high. Hey, who's that guy? <laughs> that guy's Tom Smallwood. He normally makes his spares. They said over now. Beverly Pressler is standing by with it. Patrick Girard. Thanks, Gabe. So, Patrick, you bowled a clean game, but strikes were really hard to come by, but you did make some amazing spares out there. So what was missing for you today? Uh, I was just really nervous today. I uh, couldn't get my feet under me. Uh, you know, I had an amazing time out there, though, and I spared it all. I was, uh, I thought that was going to show my weaknesses, and I actually showed uh, I could spare a lot. So, et je voudrais juste dire bonjour à tout le monde à la maison. All right, Patrick, thank you so much for thank taking the time and talking with us. Did he just say 
thank you so much, Randy. I think you're the greatest. No. He didn't say that. No. Oh, oh, he, oh, Tom Smallwood. Messenger as he got him the first shot of his first match. No, he just was saying hello to everybody in his house. Oh, I thought he said thank you for all the nice things you said about me, Randy. No. no. He may say that later. Okay. To you. Right. Person. Little messenger action. Wayne. You know, it looks like he's going to have to make a ball change. He's got to do something to get that ball to tilt a little harder. So do you, do you think there's actually hang to the right right now? I think they're creating. And there you go. That's Absolutely. The second time on that lane. Well, the players in warm-ups, Wayne, and you watched Didn't as well. Up there. They were playing out. And then all of a sudden started migrating in. Normally you do that because the front part of the lane goes, but you've thrown enough shots in the outside part of the lane that there should be friction there. The oil so long here that it just carries down to the right and it pushes out there. Oh, missed it. Uh oh. Oh, we got it. <laughs> got just enough of the head pick. Wow. You can hear him groan a little bit when he first threw it. Keep throwing it there. What's he going to do now on the right lane? He's, gonna, he's getting rid of the nerves. He's just going to have a few shots, get rid of the nerves. He'll start throwing them really good. You don't think there's an adjustment that's needed? He needs to square up a little. That's what I think. Yeah. I think he's going to square it up a little on this lane, too. Remember last shot, trip two. Mm -hmm. His best finish on tour, he was third in the extra frame Parkside Open in Aurora, Illinois. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. That one there looked like he just gave it a little bit more risk. Looks like he slowed it down, gave it a little bit more risk, turned the corner. So here's Tom Smallwood. Actually, he was telling us yesterday he may have as many as 14 people here rooting him on. He's got his wife Jennifer, daughter Hannah, and his son Brady. The ball. Sitting next to Marshall Holman, texting. Marshall. Next to him, Mike Albee. <laughs> next to him, Mark Ross. Yeah. Now, pretty good, are, pretty uh, good lineup. We have a group of Hall of Famers. I'm sitting with two Hall of Famers here. Between the three of us, we have 39 tour titles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, big double there for Tom Smallwood. Gets him to within one. He gets the ball to recover on the right lane, but looks like he's a little bit further inside and a little bit more direct, Wayne. Yeah, it looks like they both moved in a little bit and they just kind of started hitting it a little harder to get going. Absolutely. Oh, my. He stood up, got a ring at 10 out of that, but he hated that shot. Well, yeah, he hated it, but the results were pretty good, except for the ringing 10 part. All week long is that when the lane started to break down a little bit, they just jumped way left yeah and or, that, or if the players never had right to throw into they they move into fourth arrow immediately absolutely yeah. we have a very special nba sunday matchup for you on espn joel Embiid and ben simmons and the sixers in dc to take on the wizards of bradley beal nba countdown Ends our coverage with Chris Bosch joining the crew in studio at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And of course, on the ESPN app, where you may be watching this match today. Here's our new reality show, Chris versus the right lane. That's he a big in. improvement. I'm sorry, Dave, he moved in. Yeah, it looked like he moved in about five and just yeah. slowed it down, trying to go time. around it. Chess match going on now. It looked like he got up on the approach and then moved his feet an arrow left. And that's a lot more direct. And he's much closer now, obviously, on the right leg. Oh. It took a little bit of beating. I saw it. it was like Deadwood heaven <laughs> this week. The guys threw it so hard, and they're bouncing 10 pins out of the back like it was nothing. It was real easy to bounce pins out here. Throwing a code red is Chris Prather. 
had so many bowlers, guys, in in the 20 to 30 age range. We've made these shows in big February. We had everybody under 30 a week ago in Indianapolis. Right there at 26, mixes it up. Five and a half through, and it's anybody's match to take on Marshall Kent and take a run at Jason Belmonte as he tries to get a 10th major. We celebrate the 60th anniversary of the PBA by checking in with one of the finest amateur bowlers you'll ever see, Bookie Betts. Congratulations to the PBA for your 60th anniversary. PBA Players Championship back at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. As a matter of fact, the last three have been here, and also the 2013 U.S. Open, courses of which were competed here. So this has become a very important stop and one of the great ones on the PBA Tour. Match number two of the day features number five seed Tom Smallwood. Down two to Chris Prather, the number three seed. Smallwood defeated Patrick Gerard in the opening match by 31 pins. Marshall Kent awaits the winner. And on top of all that, Jason Belmonte tries for a 10th major in our final match. What do you think, Wayne? Oh, kind of looked like he moved in soft on the end. Watch how he rolls the bowling ball up on his forearm. And then unhinges into the floor. And a beautiful result. Both times he has thrown a strike after the break. His experience on television showing there. We talked many times, Wayne. I don't know if you feel the way. A lot of players will tell you that's the hardest shot to throw is the one coming out of that break. Coming out of the break's tough. If you're good at coming out of the break, that's a a big plus out here. Yes, sir. Another messenger comes. Come on, let's go. Flying over. What happened? Tom Smallwood, did you see that reaction? That's priceless. It's our Barbasol emotional close shave of the day. This is a great shot, and then obviously great pin action. Head pin to the left, back to the right. Something else at the 10 for a little insurance. He loves us the whole way, too, Wayne. Yeah, I think he figured it out. Pick up, pick up. He's trying to get a ball change here, guys, and he buries him. Looks like he went to something stronger. That ball definitely made a bigger beat down right. Yeah, that was a little stronger off the point. That was a lot better. I'll tell you what, gutsy move there. Halfway through this match, Chris Brayther knows that he's struggling just a bit. He's using the same ball on the left lane, however. Bowled a couple of years at Wichita State. Loves his job at the Luna Lanes in Pensacola. Come on, ball! Oh, yes! Oh, Got us a match. This should come down to the 10th. Beautiful shot here. You know what? Chris Prather has been doing some good bowling out here. Winner of three regionals. And we asked him why so much success this week. He said, guys, I was put off that I wasn't picked for the league. So I bowled with a chip on my shoulder this week. Heard that from a few players that did not get drafted last week when everybody gathered. Listen, there weren't that many spots available. And he was now, he is allowed to use his cell phone. You just saw there. We'll get back to that in just a second. And something caught Tom Smallwood's eye. And he'll go through his routine again. Prather with the cell phone and its rather unique shape. Uh, he was given permission. He is texting the man who is his best man at his wedding. And this is his kind of way of locking in. It's unusual to say the least, but. Tom Smallwood texting awesome. the pins with his bowling ball. <laughs> and the text that just went out was, look out, here I come. Both players have tripled. And we're back to just two pins separating the two.
Like say you're in the uh, fourth or fifth frame and you say, hey, I got, I'm going to take this off the sheet. That's when you strike out. That's taking it off the sheet. And that showed Akala Zoe in the position round a week ago. And that's how he made the show. Pick up. Well, he's just a different looking guy from the first couple of frames range when he looked maybe a little nervous and understandable. He looks really locked in now. You know, it looks like the right lane's just got a little bit more hang than the left lane. That's where they needed to make a ball change, get a little stronger. Hall of Famer Wayne Webb, our host, is joining us for this game. Chris Prather strikes out in the 10th frame. He shuts out Tom Smallwood. Two and nine will do it. It'll give him a 249, and the max for Smallwood's 248. ball that cooperates. He said push, it did. Carry, it did. So that's five straight for Prather. He struck every shot on this left lane. Which is where he's going to be finishing. Good. No. He liked it. What happened? Uh, well, obviously the ball never picked up. I mean, it just looked like it hit black ice right about there. And that's the 2 4 10. Tom Smallwood now could take it off the sheet and win. So if he converts this, it'll be a 237. Chance, no, nope. gonna chop it. So, Smallwood needs first strike in the tenth point. I think he'll probably get. He'll be in the pocket. We just gotta look for carry. And his carry's been really nice the last couple of shots. Let's see if it continues. If he does it in the pocket. Strike nine. He's a winner. Or strike nine spare. I should say he's a winner. But. Must get the strike here. Oh, yes, 10 in the pit. That was right the first time. He gets nine on this ball, he's a winner. So, nine or strike to move on for Tom Smallwood. Chris Prather has nothing to be ashamed about at 235. But it may not be enough. And this is how Smallwood got into this tournament, into this final five in the first place, having to come up with some clutch shots in the final match, qualifying in the 10th frame. Uh -oh. Came back. There's your nine. Did it look like he got around that a little bit? He, he did. did. He got around it just a hair and made it scoot down the lane. Better. But nine is nine. No, you beat me. You've been missing. Oh, okay. Good. I played you. <laughs> if you That's miss it, ball. you still win. Oh, good. <laughs> Priceless. He doesn't know what the score is. He never looks at the scoreboard. He didn't do it in position round. He just went off of the reaction from Chuck Gardner, his tour rep, and other friends and other Brunswick staffers that were there. Go ahead and shoot it, Tom. What the heck? It's yours. So Tom Smallwood has picked up a second win. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. Well, he didn't need it. So you're allowed to miss that one. And he's going to check the approach also. Something may have been a little wacky, at least in his mind. So Tom Smallwood and Marshall Kemp will be our next match. And the winner will take on Jason Belmonte, who steps into frame to get a little look at what's going on. Belmo. Nine majors in the books. Had a chance earlier this month to get the number 10 and finish fourth. But now he's the top seed in the house. He's won at before. Jason Belmonte will await the winner of our next match. 
the Barbasol PBA Players Championship is brought to you by Go Bowling. Promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. By Hammer, nothing hits like a hammer. By BowlerX.com. BowlerX.com is the online bowling supply superstore. Free shipping, free returns. Simple. BowlerX.com for the love of bowling. And by Brunswick. Find your next ball at BowlWithBrunswick.com. All right, inside Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl with Randy Peterson, Dave Lamont, and it's time for our Go Bowling Fan Tip of the Week. And Randy, we've had a lot of youngsters with a tip. We've had someone who's gone through a bit of a growth spurt and it's changed their game. So let's go to the videotape. Hello, my name is Jasmine Burks. I'm a junior bowler here at Copperfield Bowl in Houston, Texas. Over the last two years, I've grown about four inches. I need some help with my timing and my approach. Can you help me with this? All right, Jasmine, so I think you're doing a lot of really nice things in your game, but what I would do is I'd get the ball into the swing a little bit earlier, get in that top of that backswing sooner, and then when you get into the foul line, I want you to use your legs more. I want you to be in, in a much more athletic position. Your legs need to be strong. They've gotten probably longer. You're, you've gotten taller, so you really need to use those legs. And now that you're taller, it's even more important to have more knee bed. All right, by the way, if you like free advice from a Hall of Famer, we can take care of that for you. If you just go to the PBA.com, and we have all the latest news and everything there. And you can ask your question, submit a video for the Go Bowling PBA Fan Tip of the Week. And while you're at it, why don't you hunt around PBA.com for videos, player bios, stats, news, live scoring during our events as well. Randy, quick question. What have you seen so far through the first two matches? We don't have any lefties on this show this week. So we've got two to go with Kent and Belmonte yet. What do you think? Uh, well, I think the Lions have transitioned and they're forcing the players way left. And I think this is just a huge advantage for the two players that are coming up next, Marshall Kent and Jason Belmonte. But if it becomes a lofting contest, I don't think there's anybody better in the world than Jason Belmonte at doing that. And he is our number one seed, and should he win, it will be a record-tying 10th major championship. Marshall Kent versus Tom Smallwood coming up next. The Barbasol Players Championship, part of the Go Bowling PBA Tour. Our next major will be in April, the USBC Masters. And you've got Tom Smallwood looking for major title number two, and Marshall Kent looking for major title number one. Kent with us again, second straight week for Marshall to make the show. The winner will take on Jason Belmonte, who's after that 10th major will tie in with PDW and Earl Anthony. And by the way, that championship match with Delmo and the winner of this will be uninterrupted. No breaks, straight through. Unlike me to you when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do is interrupt you. By the way, we want to thank uh, Wayne Webb for dropping by here and Absolutely. offering up his knowledge. Yep. Deeper. The second time that's happened to him today. So it's dirty back. Now it looked like he missed left, and the ball ends up laying there for a four pin. I, I think that lane's probably a little bit tighter down lane, or at least the players have a bit more hold. See, that was just left of fourth arrow. Run down. Yeah, he did get away with missing his pair in that last game. Chopped the seven away from the four seven. And here's our first look today at 25 year old Marshall Kent, his fifth year as a pro, has four tour titles, two last year, and is becoming semi regular on ESPN. And early trouble. duck hooked when it came off the spot. I'm just interested to see what type of ball reaction he has and how he decides to play the lane. Get it over here into the three pin, slide the three over into the four seven, 
The ball takes out the six. Aggressive lob. I thought that had a chance. So now, last week, this is exactly what happened to him last week. Almost in the get-go, he had trouble. Yeah. So how do you... Tell yourself, oh no, not again. Well, the next shot's going to be telling, obviously, on that right lane. So, um, you know, he got a couple of practice shots while we were, uh, or during the break. So he's going to make an adjustment off of that shot, and we'll just see if it's the right one or if the adjustment works. That's the Marshall Kent we're used to seeing. I still think that lane's a little bit tighter down lane. And, you know, he could really use his wrist. I didn't miss it. It is a matter. Well, we have big Monday college basketball coming up. Duke and Virginia Tech from Blacksburg at 7 o'clock. Then Kansas will take on Texas at the Fog. Both games on ESPN and, of course, the ESPN app. You may be watching us today on your Sunday out and about. That's the advantage that Marshall Kent has with that big, heavy hand and high rev rate. And he can slap that weak 10 out. Small pocket's going to be a little bit smaller. So let's go to Kimberly Presler, who was standing by with Chris Prather, who made a strong nationally televised debut. He sure did, Dave. So, Chris, this was your first time on national television, and you almost won that match. You were just shy, won a pin. So how different was it for you to be under these lights? It was honestly really, really hot. Um, I didn't realize that it was going to be as hot as it was. I mean, I went through a whole bottle of water, and, you know, I the first couple shots didn't hit the head pin. I couldn't really feel my feet. But I get to come back for the double show, and I'm really looking forward to it. Now, we saw you testing out there. People were just saying, you know, keep your feet under you and, and words of encouragement and everything like that. It was For me, it was more just trying to keep my mind on something else other than bowling and everybody clapping and, and everything like that. So I was trying to stay more in the moment whenever I was on the lanes and, and off, the, off the lanes. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in the double show. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. All right, Kimberly and Chris, thank you very much. Here's Marshall Kent working off the strike in the second after opening in the first. There's a nice adjustment. Yeah, there's your answer. So, you know, a little bit more angle, just a little bit farther to the right, and it behaves properly. I mean, this is what he was looking for, and that's what any player looks for. When you go high, you make a move off, but you normally move your feet and your target. Marshall may have just moved his feet, increased his angle, and it worked. So that, that's, that, that's a good sign for Marshall Kent. Two-time college player of the year came out of the collegiate ranks with a ton of height and is pretty much caught up to that hype by now with the way he's bowled the last year. Come on, Marshall! Yeah, and that's another classic Marshall can't strike. It doesn't always have to be perfect. He's just got so much power. Pocket gets much bigger the higher the rev rate. This is a full rack attack on the left lane for Marshall Kent as he uses his power to shred the rack. So, got to be feeling a little bit better about himself as Tom Smallwood steps up, down nine pins. They've played once before under the lights. Smallwood won that one. But as Randy mentioned, you're just not going to shake this guy up. You, you, you can't. And that is a major problem for Tom in this major championship. Well, to me, it looks like he tries to get around this ball a little bit more to get the weak 10 out. And that's usually what happens when you leave a soft 10. And sure enough, the change of direction down lane much bigger. Watch this. Right there, it cuts right through the heart. Wow. Four out of five. This is what weak 10s do to a player. They, they cause you to to alter your release to try to get it out, and then it ends up being a big, ugly split. And the 
great try on that three, four, six, seven, ten by Tom Smallwood. So all of a sudden, Marshall Kent is up 21 pins. And Smallwood has just the one strike, which was on this lane in the third frame. First two shots on the, the right lane. Remember how he started with the big split. You see that rangefinder down lane? It was just a board ride of that rangefinder. Oh, and that was a good two boards to three boards right of the rangefinder. So it looked like it was just more angle. There it is. Oh. The spot. Yeah. No! Let's go! A flying messenger that broke the speed of sound barrier. Wow. Watch this. How fast was that messenger? I used to throw messengers like this. Said me never. <laughs> that was just dirty. Must be nice, huh? Oh. In the arsenal, a hypercell fused for Marshall. Happy 60th anniversary to the PBA. Now here we are, Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl and the Barbasol Players Championship. And for Barbasol, Dustin Abels, Colin Wiggins, we thank them. Hope they've got good seats. Oh, yeah. They've got good seats. Tom Smallwood, Marshall Kent. And right now it is Marshall Kent. As Tom Smallwood struggling with one of the two lanes. And Marshall Kent, after a bad start, has just dominated. The winner to face Jason Belmonte. And that match will be shown without interruption. Smallwood really puts a nice touch on this shot. All, it just looks like he moved his, his feet farther left. And that's normally what you do is you chase the oil line towards the middle part of the lane. For a right-hander, you move left, move your feet and your target. Try to find a little bit more oil to hold the ball off as it comes off the end of the pattern. Play through the break and continue this hot streak of five in a row. Made the finals last week. Jacob Buttruff was the tournament leader and he won. And Ken said, Yeah, I felt lousy for about 15 minutes and then I realized I got to get over it and I got to move on. And he has. Oh, God. Oh. And a rare, what do you call it, quitter, Ken? Yeah, well, that's because that ball came back from Cincinnati. <laughs> that, that was a little bit right wide of target, and you heard Marshall uh, make a comment. Now, last week, that was a five or six count washout. This week, there's a little bit more friction. Ooh. Look out. I went hung up a little bit. And he's had some spare issues over the last couple of seasons. But his coach, Mike Jasnow, 
told he's telling me that or he's told me that Marshall Kent's spare game is much better now after they've worked together along with his strike game. As Marshall gets a re rag we'll remind you about our ABC Sunday showcase presented by the U.S. Marine Corps. Lamarcus Aldridge and the Spurs take on LeBron and the Cavaliers. Chris Bosch will be in studio. It's our coverage tips with NBA countdown at 3 Eastern noon Pacific on ABC and of course on the ESPN app. Kent after the re rack Ready to go. We see the max score. Small. We could make this really interesting. Oh my, Marshall work. Well, if that was from Cincinnati, that was wheeling. That was only matter of time. Yeah, that's reminiscent of last week. Yeah. It's just a big whiff to the right. Sometimes his angles get so wide open, you can see just how far to the right that is. That's on the uh, third oh, or fourth so board down about 45 feet. <laughs> tournament leader Jason Balmati is next. And in chasing history, if he wins, it'll be yet another major. His 10th, and he'll tie Earl Anthony and Pete Weber atop the list of all time. Well, we can have a, a lead change here with two more strikes in the eighth and ninth by Tom Smallwood, who was left for dead after four frames. And nearly everybody's mind but his. This one a little Elvis Presley <laughs> hip thruster as the ball went through the pocket. Here we go, and wait for it. There we go. Oh, like you know. Tom Smallwood has not left the building. No quitting this man. Mentally as tough as anybody out here. Won that major in 2009. It was only his second career TV appearance. That was after he left his job. Actually, his job left him. He was laid off. <laughs> yeah, he is absolutely in command right now, and there is your lead change. And just like that. That is a lead change. All of these by two pins. He's made up 43 pins since we came back from the break. The mechanic strikes again. Five bagger. Tom Smallwood now max score Marshall Kent 245 max score Tom Smallwood 247 last two shots very suspect for Marshall Kent oh wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute no it curves away short pin didn't get to the 10 that was a pretty good shot too Pin got hung up in the left channel and doesn't get over to the 10. Yeah, he liked that one a lot better. That was much more solid. It's Smallwood by three. Two strikes in the 10th here. Four Smallwood a strike. First ball in the 10th. Which he was in that same situation in the match with Chris Prather, and Smallwood did indeed deliver the strike and the nine that he needed to advance to this match with Marshall Kent. Smallwood started in our first match as the number five seed. in the gutter. 
And tonight we have a special NBA Sunday matchup of Joel Embiid and Simmons and the Sixers in D.C. to take on the Washington Wizards, 8 o'clock Eastern tonight for the game. NBA Countdown, 7 o'clock with Chris Boss joining our crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Those times, of course, Eastern. So everything is settled to Marshall's satisfaction. Second ball of the 10th. Got to have it. Caught it that time. Oh, my goodness. It looked like a fantastic shot. Yeah, it was really good. Everything about this was really good except the result. That's a vicious ringing ah. chat. Smallwood needs a mark. So 224 for Marshall Counts. Why do you have to follow this one? You bet against Tom Smallwood at your own risk. Needs so. to fill 18 pins, so spare an eight, strike and nine. It. He bowls for the title. Misses. Marshall Kent moves on. He's missed two spares, but they've both been to the left side of the lane. He's been perfect to the right side of the lane. Has to make it, and he did. Beautifully done. Nine or better. Eight, and we have a tie and a roll off. One ball. would won the other televised meeting between these two. And he's going to take his time. Nine or strike to win. Eight to tie. Less than eight. And it will be Kent versus Belmonte for the title. There's the nine. He got a strike in nine last game when he needed it, and he got a strike in nine this game when he needed it. I'm going to change his nickname to the Postman. I read it seems like Tom Smallwood always delivers. Great shot there. Tom Smallwood up to the number five seed, up the ladder with three wins. Can he get one more, or will Jason Belmonte make bowling history? Now this place is energized and we're ready for the championship match with Barbasol Players Championship here in Columbus, Ohio at Wayne Webb's home. Playing for big money and a big trophy in our Geico Championship recap. And match number one, Tom Small taking on Patrick Gerard. Small gets the five-bagger in the middle of that match. Patrick Gerard made everything under the plan, but it didn't matter. It was all Tom Small with 237 and 206. And match number two, Smallwood takes on Chris Prather. Prather catches a five oh, bagger late. Carry. But this 2 4 10, second ball in the 10th, would oh. prove to be his undoing as Smallwood strikes first ball in the 10th for a five bagger, gets nine. And that is Austin Road. He wins 236 no, 235. And in the last match you just saw, Smallwood takes on Marshall. Oh, that time. Marshall strikes the first ball in the 10th. Ringing 10 in the second. Now it's time for Smallwood to once again step up and fill 18. He goes 10 pin, 10 pin. He wins 225, 224. Came from 41 pins behind in that match to Tom Smallwood, so he records two very narrow victories. Jason Belmonte is his opponent. So we've got two major champions going at it. Belmo with nine, Smallwood with one. The winner will get to walk over and pick up this trophy claim the title of the Players' Championship here in Columbus. Will Jason Belmonte tie her own PBW? So here we go, uninterrupted, the championship match at Barbasol Players' Championship here at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in Ohio. 
Jason Belmonte going for a 10th major. Tom Smallwood going for a second. Belmo with a three to one advantage. Lifetime and television appearances versus Smallwood. Going all the way back to 2009. And Smallwood will start on the left lane. Tournament leader gets choice of starting lane. Belmo makes Smallwood start the match, which means Smallwood will finish the match on the right lane. And he will leave a relatively soft 10 there. All right, Randy, from what you've seen so far, how do the lanes break down for this match? I, I mean, I think the lanes have transitioned in, in a nice way, a, a high scoring conducive way. All you got to do is get the corners out. Well, it has been a high scoring tournament. We had a dozen 300 games of qualifying. So this is the pristine oil condition before competition. Pretty gorgeous. Yeah, the players, when they practice, they played out a lot. And then as the front part of the lane would break down here, the players go this way and they just find more oil. You can actually see that track area right there around fourth arrow, inside of fourth arrow, right there. And Belmo. This is how he bowled from second one. He walked in the center earlier in the week. So we're gonna check the location of this shot, Dave, versus what we've been watching all day. So most of the track area has been in here. You can see Belmonte is completely left of that by a good three or four boards. Sends it out to about the sixth board and back. That's some sick angle. He is our first and only two-hander on the show today. We had no left-handers. 16 titles, a 17th would also mean a 10th major. Trip two. Ooh, okay. And I've set it throughout the entire telecast that the left lane's tighter down lane, and there you have it. Location about the same, not only at the arrows, but down lane, and it just doesn't come off the spot as hard on that left lane. We almost had a tournament average record, just a shade under 245 for this event. <laughs> it's nearly a 200 pin advantage over the field. There were no bonus pins. Huh this one. Didn't have that going. Belmo trying to win this back-to-back, -back, win this title for a third time. Tom Smallwood, you see what he's done in TV title matches, about 500. Tom trying to get back in the winner's circle for the first time since the Scorpion Championship in Vegas in 2013. Side to 10. Sports Center at night follows the 76ers Wizards game. John Butchagos and Kevin Connors will bring you the best moments from the Rockets Nuggets with Houston trying to make it a 12 straight win. Plus, everything you need to see and hear about what happened with Tiger Woods at the Honda Classic and an unforgettable SC feature titled The Black 14. SC at night, 10 30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN. See that not even near the angle that Belmonte's playing. That's just ridiculous with Belmonte. Let's go, to get to that number one seed. Look at that. Not that. Kimberly Pressler is standing by with Marshall Kent. Kimberly? I, I sure am, guys, and Marshall seems to be handling that loss pretty good. He's got his chocolate chip cookies out here. So, Marshall, you had a really good lead uh, at the start of that, but then the seventh frame happened. So what changed for you? I couldn't tell you. It was just one of those things I've been fighting all week. I have those errant shots that just go way right out of nowhere. And, and oh, wow. it's all a game. And, 
you know, small stepped up when he needed to, and now I'm here and enjoying a cookie. Well, you're going to have to share those cookies. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. Good I, luck, Kimberly. I'm not so sure he's going to do that. I'm going to tackle him for those cookies, just saying. If I were you, I'd leave now because I think he's going to wipe those babies out. He's still going at him right now as he's walking to the seat. So, Jason Belmonte, that was one of the easiest graphics our group has ever put together. That's why. Oh, this is going to be a close one. Well, it looked like he gave that one a little bit different rotation at the bottom of the swing to make it come around the corner. I mean, there's just pins flying everywhere. Reigning player of the year, and it wasn't even close. That was a landslide for Belmont, understandably. With three majors in a year. Not to mention the defending champion of this event. Yep. Bulldog on a pork chop, you just can't convince him otherwise. He only knows one thing, and that's to give it 110% with every shot. Let nothing phase you. Just get up there and do your job. Really the perfect guy in this situation because there are some other players who might be phased either by playing against Jason or understanding the moment or it's a major or it's TV. It's just you're not going to get that from here from Tom Smallwood, just not. The tight lane. The good news, it's just the two pin. Nano for Belmo in this one. Earlier today, by the way, but when players were warming up, Belmo had a chance to uh, be photographed by Randy, who took uh, a camera and did a decent job. I was actually operating Charles Montgomery's handheld, or pretending like I was. Oh, goodness. Just an absolute sneak attack on that four pin. And here is Randy with today's track tech talk. A segueing out of the pins being paralyzed to two completely different ways to hook it. Now here's Wayne Webb back in the day. Yeah, he had a mullet. Jason Belmonte on the right, uh, no mullet. You can see the position of Wayne Webb at the top. And this is a two-handed style that we've uh, all become so familiar with. But Wayne Webb was the power player back in the day. Make no mistake about it. but. Didn't have near the power that this man has. But does Belmo have a suit like that in his closet? I doubt it. You know what? If anybody could bring the mullet back, it's probably that guy right there. There's no room on the deck after this shot. They're gone. And he's very comfortable in this building. He won here last year. He had a good run in 2013 at the U.S. Open. And as he's told us, there's just some places you walk in and you feel like you're going to do well no matter what, and others where you know you're going to struggle as soon as you walk in. Tom Smallwood working on a max of 269. That might not be enough. And he's going to go ahead and go down the swing. Again, we are not interrupting this match. Uh, he trailed big in the last match against Kent. That didn't phase him. He's going up against the greatest bowler on the planet. That doesn't phase him. And that's another great shot by Tom Smallwood. I mentioned Smallwood's max of 269. That's because Belmo is looking at a max of 280 right now. Smallwood looking for a second major, won his first major against Wes Malott. Why not win your second one against Jason Belmonte? You put that on your resume. Nicely, Dave. It looked like he was going to drift a little high, but it looked like 
Got it last second and rolled out right in front of the one three. This shot punched the words out of me. Take, take a look at this ball motion. It started to go and then it just kind of stopped. All right, well, there's the answer to Belmonte's four bagger. Last time up on the right lane, Belmonte trip four. He's bowling in a refrigerator. That's dirty, just dirty. Really in control right now, both these players. We've only had three spares. Watch this guy on Friday night, Dave. Early on, throwing at about 21 miles an hour between first and second arrow. And towards the end of competition, lofting it over the left gutter cap. Second, he had goalpost, and a messenger saved him from a disaster. Almost Satan's bedpost right here. The messenger saves the 10, but the seven pin still standing. Good news, he gets to finish on the right lane. But I think Belmonte knows exactly what this whole pattern is giving him right now. And look out. No, he's solid here. And that pin. Bouncing all the way past the brothers. Well, with that nine spare there in the eighth, the scoring is simple. If both players take it off the sheet, 269 for Smallwood, 259 for Belmonte. So a strikeout for Smallwood, and he's your champion. Simple as that. Simple. <laughs> He'd need five in a row to do that. But. Randy mentioned he was 41 pins in arrears of Marshall Kent in the last match and one by one. Transition from the power of Belmonte. Belmonte is going to get one more shot on the right lane. Jason will finish on the left lane. Will Tom Smallwood get caught up with the jet wash created by the power and revolutions of Jason Belmonte? Now, first things first, Smallwood strikes here. There's nothing Jason Belmonte can do to shut him out. 30 games of qualifying. Fourth match for Tom Smallwood. Two frames to go for the championship. We're tied. Yes, Tom Smallwood shows power and some emotion for Tom. Now in the left lane, he got some love right here. Gets into that switch zone. The pins cooperate, and now. It's up to Jason Belmonte to apply the pressure. Remember, right lane hooks more, left lane's tighter. Perfect. Dead solid perfect. Big shot coming up now. The last time on this lane, massive messenger leads the seven. Belmonte needs all three in the tenth to force Smallwood to get a double and nine for a tie, all three to win. Nope, hang on, check that. Two in the tenth to win. Which is what he had to do to get on the show in the first place. Great shot. Come on. The tighter lane got him. The tighter lane affected his carry. Another great shot for nine. But he needs 10 to get his 10th time.
Well, that's gonna, he's going to be in the high 230s, but Smallwood's already in the 240s. A strike here forces Smallwood to mark. Not on that one. Can I please take a rear right, John? Boy, what a game Belmonte's bowled. Oh, uh, really be curious to get his thoughts after this because he has bowled very well. Both these guys have bowled brilliantly in this match. Yep. We've had nothing but strikes or single pins. That right lane's been sitting now. I wonder if Smallwood's going to make an adjustment on that lane before even get before uh, he gets to throw his first shot in the tenth, anticipating transition. But as you said earlier, first things first. Just a massive messenger, seven in the eighth, ring 10 in the 10th. Now it's all small with any mark, he wins. I believe he needs a mark. The best kind of mark would be a strike right here. On the right lane, on the hooking lane. The second major championship is in his hand. Jason Belmonte will have to wait until April for another chance to tie her own and even go to Portland. President of Tom today. So Belma, two cracks in February to tie her own and PBW, and he can't get him. But this time, that's not his fault. Tom Smallwood just took this thing back. is brought to you by Barbasol Premium Razors. You're looking good, America. By track, evolutionary, revolutionary. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by PBA Bowling Challenge. Bowl against your friends or the PBA pros. Download the free app today. How about this? Tom Smallwood starts off against Patrick Gerard, and then Chris Prather by one, then Marshall Kent by one, and then Jason Belmonte throws the second highest game of the day, 239, and Smallwood goes off for a 267 to win the Barbasol PBA Players Championship. He's cleaned up a little bit, and he's standing by with Kimberly. 
Thanks, guys. I am Lane Side, and I'm I am here with Colin from Barbersall and Wayne Webb. Would you please do the honors? We're going to be doing the trophy presentation out here. Colin, thank you so much. Wayne, please do the honors. On behalf of Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl and Barbersall, absolutely a great tournament. Congratulations. And I wanted to tell you thank you, but it never felt sincere enough, so I wanted to wait till I was done bowling to you to talk to you about it. You guys do the most amazing job anywhere on tour we do. You make us feel like home, and it's amazing. Thank you so much. So many thank yous to you guys. Thank you. The atmosphere here is absolutely amazing. Wayne, thank you so much for having us here. Now, Tom, wow, you earn this championship. You climb the step ladder. At one point, you were 40 plus pins down in the Kent match, and then you took out the player of the year. Put in words what this win is to you. It means everything, you know, just making shows are great. You know, I, in my 40s now, and you never know if you're making another show, never know if you're gonna win again. And, and you know, this is just, thanks to my kids being here, just, it's everything. I see you getting a little emotional, and for good reason. Talk to me about what it's like to bowl the way you did today in front of your kids. Oh, it's everything. Without without them, this means zero. So, uh, it's 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 them, not me. Uh, this is my job, and I'm fortunate to be do what I love. You know, this is amazing. Bowl against the best bowler that I've ever seen today. You know, so uh, it's just a great honor to be here and against these guys and, and to uh, you know hold this. Well, you absolutely earned that trophy. Congratulations on winning today. Your champion, Tom Smallwood, earning a shaving cream shower, winning a Wayne Webb Columbus Bowl, taking down four players en route to his second major championship. A very deserving winner, defeating Jason Belmonte and Chris Brather, Marshall Kent, and Patrick Girard. We invite you to join us for our next PBA telecast on ESPN from Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl, the Mark Roth Marshall Holman PBA Doubles Championship presented by BowlerX.com, Sunday, March 25th at 2. For Randy, Kimberly, and all of us, thank you for watching.